Art has been an integral part of human culture for centuries, reflecting the times we live in and acting as a form of expression for society. However, art has also been a focal point for thievery, even being used as a weapon in wars and conflicts, with one of the most significant examples being the biggest art heist in the world, the Nazi plunder of art during World War II. During World War II, the Nazis looted an estimated 600,000 artworks from Jewish families and museums all across Europe. The artworks were considered valuable both as cultural treasures, but most importantly, as a source of revenue for the Nazi regime. Many of the stolen pieces were stored in salt mines, warehouses, and even castles all across Germany. They were then carefully catalogued and awaited the sale. One of the most significant pieces being the portrait of Adele Blockbauer by Gustav Klimt. This story starts with Hildebrand Gerlitt, a German art dealer who was appointed by the Nazis to acquire artworks for their museum in Linz, Austria. He was also tasked with selling so-called degenerate art on behalf of the Nazis. Degenerate art was a term coined by the Nazis to ridicule modern art that did not fit in with Hitler's vision. After World War II had ended, Gerlitt was investigated by Allied forces, but was able to keep many of the artworks he had acquired. You see, Germany signed the 1998 Washington Principles, which compelled the government to compensate victims of Nazi thefts. But Germany couldn't force Mr. Gerlitt to return the artworks. This is due to the fact that the stolen pieces were beyond Germany's 30-year statute of limitations. But, when Gerlitt's son, Cornelius, died in 2014, the greatest treasure trove of looted Nazi art in 70 years had been found. It was discovered that he had inherited 121 framed and 1,285 unframed artwork from his father's collection. These included works by Pablo Picasso, Henri Matisse, and Marc Chagall, and many others. All put together, it is estimated to be worth around upwards of $1.5 billion. Now what's the total price of the remaining 600,000-plus artworks? Estimating the value of the stolen artworks is difficult. Many of them were not catalogued, and their whereabouts are still unknown. However, it is believed that the total value of the stolen artworks could be in the tens of billions of dollars. The hunt for stolen artworks has been ongoing since the end of World War II. Organizations, such as the Commission for Looted Art in Europe, and the Art Loss Register work to locate missing pieces and track their ownership history. Some stolen artworks have been recovered and returned, while others are still missing. Adele Bloch-Bauer's portrait is just one of many artworks that were stolen by the Nazis during World War II. Other victims include the Rothschild family, whose extensive art collection was seized by the Nazis and later dispersed among various museums and private collections. In recent years, some of these artworks have been returned to the Rothschild family, including a painting by Gustav Klimt that was returned in 1999. Despite the long and complicated legal battle over Adele Blockbauer's portrait, the painting has become an important symbol of the fight against Nazi art theft. It is a reminder of the atrocities committed during World War II and the ongoing efforts to return stolen artworks to their rightful owners. The painting also serves as a testament to Gustav Klimt's legacy as an artist and his friendship with Adele Bloch-Bauer. The theft and destruction of art during times of war and conflict not only robs us of cultural treasures, but also erases a significant part of our shared history. The ongoing efforts to locate and return stolen artworks to their rightful owners highlight the importance of preserving art and protecting it from destruction. By doing so, we can ensure that future generations will have the opportunity to appreciate these glimpses of our history.